I think a lot of people want to know why should they believe in you and why should they believe that you're going to take this program to a right. winning record and you know you've never had experience as a head coach why should people believe in you oh i think um for me i've always had a football mindset All right, we're out here right now with Eddie Robinson Jr., head coach of Alabama State University. When I say those words to you, what kind of goes through your mind as this is your alma mater? Well, I think two things. Uh, the first thing when you say head coach and Eddie Robinson Jr., you have to think of the legend. You know, uh, Eddie Robinson, guy that I played against, uh, being from New Orleans, going to the Bayou Classic, you know, he was always a, a, a larger than life figure. Uh, as, a, as a young guy and then even as a player in the conference and even afterwards. So that's the first thing. I and mean, when you think of Alabama State and football, I think of Houston Markham. So those are probably two coaches, one I played for, one I played against, but both of them have had a huge influence on my life. People probably remember you from back in the day. You graduated with a, a chemistry yeah. degree. So we're going to go back to that point. You graduated here from the chemistry degree, and I have to ask you, what, what uh, did, did you have the periodic table memorized, and what was your favorite element? Well, uh, that's, that's a good one. So my favorite element would probably be silver, if I, if I had to pick one. Uh, just probably because I'm, I'm not a flashy guy. When I think of you know gold or silver, I'm probably more practical. Okay. So I'm probably more of a silver type of guy. But uh, I think uh, you know majoring in chemistry was tough. Uh, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to major in when I got here. And so uh, I wanted to do more like um, you know research and that type of stuff. And so I uh, wasn't sure what I was going to do. But then once I got into it, it was tough, but it was enjoyable. It's 1992. You get drafted second round to the NFL, to the Houston Oilers. Yeah. What do you remember about that day? It was definitely a lot of excitement. And I can remember the next day I had to drive back uh, to Montgomery to fly out to Houston, ironically, although I was close to it from New Orleans. But that's yeah, what yeah. we did. And so I think just getting back on campus and talking to your friends. Well, 11 years you spent in the NFL, you played in a Super Bowl. Yeah. Was that your most memorable experience? Or what, what do you take away from the NFL when you think of your career? I, I think the playoffs are always memorable. You, you probably think about the big losses mm -hmm. more than you think about the big wins. I think the Music City Miracle was one of those games that was kind of like you know, our Jackson State game. It was a playoff game. We had a, we had a good team, but we were still in the playoffs as a wild card team and didn't know how good we could be. Think about the NFL is a great way to make a living. So that's how, that's how I put it, put it. I mean, it's not just the pay, but just the friendship and the camaraderie to have, you know, 70, 80,000 people, you know, cheering you. Everybody knows your name. I think it was 2002 that you retired. Yeah. So I guess take us through what Eddie did in that time from 2002, maybe up uh, until now that had to deal with football. Well, that's a, that's a pretty big time span. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I first moved to Atlanta for a couple years, uh, then moved back to Houston. Mm -hmm. And once I moved back to Houston, then I started getting into youth sports coaching. Uh, my sons were playing, so I mean, pretty much coached every sport. Baseball, which I didn't know how to play, and I had to learn how to coach that. And so that was a great experience because now you're going outside of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, coach football at pretty much all levels, more from a volunteer standpoint. Um, just always helping kids, mentoring kids, reaching back. And then I got into the, the broadcasting, which that kind of started in Atlanta. And, th and that was me just sitting around trying to figure out exactly what I was going to do. I, I had the business part down, you know, real estate, stuff like that. But then you say, hey, man, I would still like to participate in the sport in some way. And so it was just went to Fox Sports one day and did a little analyst work, didn't really think much of it. And next thing you know, I was on ESPN and I was broadcasting games. What is one thing that you want fans of Alabama State to know about you. I'm an avid bike rider. I'm a cyclist. Mm -hmm. So if you see it on a nice beautiful day and you're riding around downtown Montgomery and you see a guy on a bike, give me that three feet. You know, that's all we ask for. In Texas, that's the law. I don't know if it's the law in Alabama. So okay. we just ask that you give us three feet away from the, from the cyclist. This is, this is one of my older bikes. So okay. if you ask any avid cyclist, you say, uh, how many bikes do you need? He says, how many I have plus one. So, <laughs> so how many do you have? I have about six. six. And I'm always looking to buy a plus one. I think um, you know, once you get into it, it's just a great way to spend uh, Saturday right, uh, yeah. time with friends. And so um, you, you're not always breathing hard. It's, it, you can kind of have relaxing conversations on the bike also. Nice. Um, so once I got into it, then I started you know, doing more and more. I went to the Tour de France. So I was kind of like, 
all in. So I'm like, uh, wow. yeah, I'm, some people call me a European sports nerd. Probably way into cycling than more than an average football coach, I would say. Yeah, that, no, so. definitely. It's something unique, very different. And remember, we have to give him how many feet on the road? Oh, three feet. So Always and, and feet. What that means if, if I'm here, mm -hmm. there's a car. You're one, two, three. So you don't want to get like right up next to the cyclist. Right. So I mean, I've I've ridden in different countries and I've brought my bike in other places. So I've, it's a great sport. I mean, I've yeah. I've enjoyed it. I've I always liked bicycles since I was a kid. So it was something that I I did as a youngster and would always ride around the whole city of New Orleans. Um, I always find it funny enough. I always had dreams about you know going to the Tour de France and, and racing in it as a kid. But uh, it's one of those things that you know not a whole lot going on to it so I did the BMX bicycles oh nice and yeah and once I grew up I just kind of got into the road cycling and this it just took off so uh -huh.